coffee. Coffee now! And here he is, Michael Savage. Ask me for the world. It doesn't seem much. Ask me. It is Rock and Roll Friday on the Savage Nation. Night like this that I wish I could have my brain and be back in my 15-year-old body. But it ain't going to happen. Now, I was going to talk about your grievances. I was going to play Peter King, where he attacks the Tea Party, gets hysterical, and he calls the Tea Party rhinos, uh, which is crazy because if the Tea Party are rhinos, I guess that would make Peter King a wino because it makes no sense, does it? But I don't want to talk about that because... We're playing checkers, and Obama's playing triple chess. He has us distracted on this issue, and he's got all of the so-called conservatives hysterical, even though they lost before they entered the arena. They were beaten before they entered the arena. They didn't have the, the numbers for it. You know what I'm going to talk about? National security. It's an issue that concerns me greatly because something is going on behind the scenes in my estimation. Now, admittedly, I'm a novelist, and I tend toward imaginative... Uh, scenarios, but I read today that the Air Force general in charge of nuclear missiles was fired over conduct unspecified. That's a few days after another key official, another general, who oversees U.S. nuclear missiles was relieved of duty. So they got rid of a general the other day for using counterfeit ships in an Indian gambling casino, which makes no sense. Now they announced today that Major General Michael Carey was also removed from command of the three wings of intercontinental ballistic missiles, a total of 450 missiles at three bases across the country. But why? A U.S. defense official said he was fired over, quote, conduct. And then they said that it did not have to do with gambling. It did not, did not have to do with the loss of a nuclear weapon. It did not have to do with sexual misconduct. So how could they fire a man without a hearing? How is this possible? How could they do this? The question is, why are they doing this? Now, if... The Navy announced that the deputy commander of U.S. nuclear forces, Vice Admiral Tim Giardina, was relieved of duty earlier in the week. And now today we find out that this rare event uh, <clears throat> occurs where they throw out the two-star general in charge of all Air Force nuclear missiles by Obama again. While we're arguing over Obamacare, he's playing triple chess. It's like seven days in May. What is going on is the question. And I, I will give you some scenarios. I'll ask you the question, though. Why is Obama firing long-standing generals who are in charge of our nuclear defensive missiles? What is he planning? Would you like a novelist's nightmarish scenario to add to your woes, to your fears, to your worries about this strange government? I'll give it to you. If I were writing a novel, it would go like this. The president relieves of duty all the generals who might respond to a threat by launching missiles against a foreign power. And he puts in place patsies who answer only to him who would not respond to a, uh, the threat of a nuclear strike by a foreign power. And so the scenario plays out in my imaginary novel as follows. A foreign power, let it say it's China, threatens to launch nukes against America. The president goes on television one Friday night while all of you are watching pornography and football. And he says, in order to save lives, we have decided to turn some of the duties of our government over to the Chinese who know how to do things in some ways better than we do. Then Barbara Boxer, Diane Feinstein, Harry Reid laugh and applaud behind him. There will be no changes, just slight changes in management. You will not notice any changes in any part of your life. Perhaps a few people in the media may not be there. But other than that, life goes on. Please go back to your pornography and Real Housewives uh, of various and sundry cities of America. Good night and good luck. This is the president. Is that a possible scenario or is it too far-fetched? Now, if it was a film... You'd say it's imaginative, and you'd say you'd applaud the director. If it was Marty Sorkisi who did it, whatever his name is, if Marty had done it, you'd say, gee, he's brilliant. If one of the other Hollywood moguls had 
uh, did such a movie, you'd call him a brilliant, brilliant man. But because I, Michael Savage, have proposed this this humble idea, it is, uh, immediately must be dismissed. You'd expect me to be screeching about Obamacare tonight, but I'm not going to do it. When I see that Rush and Hannity and the other minions who follow Rush, whatever Rush does, they do, because he is the leader of that, of that group. Whatever Rush does, they copy. That's the format for all these years. There has to be a leader. He's their leader. That's okay. Uh, I could see him doing it, but I can't see how anyone could copy it for the next 12 hours in the day. He starts to attack the Republicans after kissing, licking their boots, and carrying their water. Okay, people change. He went to the White House along with the minions. I didn't. I wasn't invited when Bush was in power. Now all of a sudden they woke up and they're doing what I've been doing and saying for the last 15 years. I've been calling them Republicrats and this and that, telling you not to trust them. It's a one-party system, two-card Monty. Now they're all in on the act. Now I'm not going to talk about that, though. I'm worried about national security. There have been reports this week of dry runs by not nuns in, in uh, habits, but by burkas. Women wearing burkas. Six women wearing burkas got on a plane and abruptly got up at once while men ran in and out of the uh, aisles of an airplane. So pilots are warning that there may be a dry run tested, not to let your guard down. But notice it was not nuns and habits who ran forward on the plane uh, where the dry run, run was suspected. It's our dear friends in burkas again. And we hear nothing about this from the TSA nor the other superb individuals in charge of our national security. Instead, we hear that the generals in charge of Air Force nuclear missiles were fired this week. Why? Why are they firing them? There's no charges. One was fired on the trumped-up charge that he used counterfeit gambling chips in an Indian gambling casino in North Dakota. If I were his lawyer, I could have those charges dismissed in 15 minutes. That's number one. This guy's fired for no reason whatsoever. He was fired over, quote, conduct without a trial. How could you live in a country where generals who have devoted their lives to this country and its safety can be fired simply because someone accuses them of something? You're now living in the ex-Soviet Union. So I'm asking you again. I know this is a tough one for most of you diehards because in talk radio, you basically are ready for the topics you've heard all day or the day before. And I tend to break new ground because I'm the end of the day and I'm also quite creative and my mind is imaginative and I don't like to repeat myself so each show is somewhat of a new show but this is a new a new reality for us why in the world has Obama fired the Air Force generals in charge of nuclear missiles tw two of them in a week and replaced them by the way Kowalski has selected the vice commander of Air Force Global Strike Command Major General Jack Weinstein to temporarily re replace General Kerry as head of 20th Air Force. Now, I don't know whether Jack Weinstein is as good as General Kerry. I have no way to know who they are. But when I see two of them go in a week, something's wrong. Something is wrong. Obama has been purging the military. And I'm the only one who sees this. Or am I wrong? Is it pure, is it pure paranoia on my part? On what basis would you fire these men without a trial? How is that possible? Let's take some calls from people who may know something. You never know what you're going to get on a, on a talk radio show because you don't know who's calling you. There are people high up in the military who are still patriotic. There are people high up in the CIA and the FBI and Naval Intelligence who are very patriotic, and they cannot express themselves anywhere but on talk radio, and perhaps they will call this show with some knowledge that they have that can alert the American people to whether or not my paranoid suspicions have any basis in reality. Let's put it that way. I'm willing to admit that I'm just simply being hasty in my analysis. I'm willing to admit that. But all I've got on my show is my credibility. And part of my credibility is my ability to think. And the day I can no longer think, I can't continue to talk. Uh, who was it who wrote, I think, therefore I am? Was it Descartes? I think he wrote, I think, therefore I am. I have defined myself as, follow, as follows. I talk, therefore I am. So I am the Descartes of talk radio. 855-400-7282 is the phone number. 855-400-SAVAGE. Let's take some of these calls. Something's wrong with the picture. Jim on WYOO in Florida. Jim, what do you know? How are you? What's on your mind? 
All right, um, Dr. Savage, you and I are like clones. That We were uh, almost exactly alike. I flew B-52s in the Air Force up until 1991, and then later on went off to do a medical career. And um, what I'm seeing here is something classic of a third world country. What he's doing is coup-proofing his government. And you've heard this first from me. I've been watching this all along because we actually had a three-star in our base that I actually was good friends with, and I know of a couple other three-stars <clears throat> that I play golf with. And what's happening is he takes down these generals. Because think about it. If you look at a country like we have now, Congress will not take him down. There's That's right. He has no opposition party. He has no opposition in the media. The only people who might stand up to a coup would be the old line generals. Is that what he's doing? That's exactly what he's doing. And I'm glad that you're addressing it. It's given me goosebumps thinking about this, that you're finally hitting it right on the head. But, Jim, it's not tonight for the first time. I've been talking about it for months now. It started with the generals who stood up to him with Benghazi. He fired them within two days. Remember that? Yeah, but it goes back even farther than that. So this even goes back to the Clinton administration, which I never had to serve under a Democrat. I served under Ronald Reagan and Bush number one. I never had to serve under this traitor. Well, let, let's define again who you are. You are self, by, by your own analysis, excuse me, by your own statement, you flew B-52 bombers, correct? That is correct. And you see this the way I see it, that Obama is planning something along the lines of some kind of draconian takeover of the country? Well, let me just tell you this. He's got to coup-proof it. He has to, you have to realize, he is from a third world country. I went to Indonesia back in 2005, and I got to see exactly what he's from, exactly what he's from. And what you see there is at any time the government can be taken over by the military because the military has the guns. Think about it. They, so in other words, he's afraid of what was done to Morsi will be done to him because Morsi was thrown out because he was a dictator, the military had to retake the country. Is that what Obama lays awake worrying about at night? Well, you have to realize, he is, his, his heart is in Africa, okay? His heart is with a guy from South Africa that was a murderous traitor that is now regarded as one of the kings of the world now, okay? I don't understand it, and that's, and that's the way you do business in Africa. You get the guns together and you take over the government. But how? Do, well, let me ask you about military protocol. Can they just fire someone for a made-up reason? I'm going to tell you something. Once you pass 06, you are no longer in the military. You are a politician. I know this. So he, so he can remove anybody on a pretext on made-up charges. Is that correct? They can do anything they want because you're working for one thing, doctor. You're working for that tension. Anybody that says they're doing it for the good of the country in this day and age, when you have to serve under these administrations, you are working for that, that pension, and you're having to bite your tongue every single day you go to work. Gee, this is a great call, but it doesn't surprise me. And all I can say is I take my hat off to you. You flew the big birds, which have to be one of the most beautiful aircraft God has ever seen man design. You, you flew them, no doubt, with nuclear weapons on them. That's what they were designed for. Is that correct? Well, I cannot confirm or deny that, okay? I'm set on that. And my father worked on B-52s. And I hope you keep my cell phone number because I'd love to meet you in person next time I'm out in San Francisco. All right, you guys keep Jim's number. We'll meet him next time he's out in San Francisco. That's a shocking call. And it's Friday night. And I know people are focused on Obamacare and funding arguments, but you're playing checkers. You're playing backgammon while they're playing triple chess and they're firing the top generals in the military. That's what's on my mind. If you are in the military or in an intelligence agency or retired CIA, retired FBI, retired DIA, any retired service, and you fear, as I fear, call the show. Let the average American hear from you. This may be our last chance to discuss openly what I... What I actually fear. I'll be back. Coffee. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855 400